Hi, and welcome to Newsmakers for inside analysis and behind the scenes commentary from Santa Barbara's top journalists and political leaders about the most important news events in our community. I'm your host, Jerry Roberts. Tonight, we look behind these headlines. Goleta's City Council votes to get those damn dump scooters off their streets and sidewalks. Survivors remember the horror as the first anniversary of the Thomas Fire and the Montecito disaster approaches. Innovative community strategies emerge to respond to the new normal of climate change calamities. And then we'll take a look back at the biggest stories of 2018. Our panel tonight, Josh Molina, who covers politics and policy for NewsHawk. Catherine Barnes, news producer at KCRW-FM. Laura Capps, nonprofit consultant and school board member. Thank you all for coming. So Josh, Goleta was the latest city to be hit by the national plague of motorized scooters dumped throughout the town by tech bro disruptors. <laughs> and the council did not take kindly to it. Uh, what happened? Well, the, the council, after it was about a three hour meeting, they said, we're done. We're, we're banning these from the city of Goleta. And they said, hey, we're open to you coming back, working with us to, to uh, have a plan for, for scooters. But what happened was bike first in September dropped several hundred. They, at the meeting, said they didn't really know how many. Lime followed. And the scooters are great. I mean, the technology is, is cool. It's an opportunity for people to, to uh, use them, last mile sort of stuff. But the problem was, they didn't really know their community. They dropped 400, at, you know, that's sort of the number people are using, in a residential neighborhood. And we're talking five, six on every corner. <laughs> Too many. And they weren't stacked properly. They were laying, they were blocking the sidewalk. Roger Aceves, who's been on the council 12 years, said he's never had more public outrage and comment over an issue this like this one this was the, the most that he's ever seen 300 people sent emails to mm. the city council saying mostly get rid of these things there were there are some supporters of it as well um, you know they, they are cool but they just they just don't know the market well and it, but it's not just Goleta I mean so first of all it was earlier in Santa Barbara that had a similar experience but it's in New York it's it's all across Santa the Monica. country Santa yeah. Monica yeah I mean that's what's stunning to me about what happened is that they these companies have money and that they didn't sort of invest on the front end to figure out how to do this correctly with government relations and working with cities cuz I mean I, I, I you know it sounds as though there could have been some compromise but they just go in and dump them it's crazy Well Santa Barbara they tried this in Santa Barbara earlier in the year yeah. 200 on State Street, Santa Barbara swooped in, impounded them within the day, and Goleta let them stay for two and a half months. They made a lot of money in those two and a half months. Uh, a lot of high school students were using them to get to school. Uh, but you're supposed to be 18 to drive them, right? Supposed to be 18. You're supposed um, to have a helmet. Supposed to, and, and you're supposed to uh, ha upload your driver's license. You're supposed to, it's a, it's a motorized vehicle. You have to have a driver's license to do this. So uh, parents were logging their kids in, using their app so they could hmm. use them. So the problem was there's just so much clutter. If you were in Goleta, you could not go anywhere without seeing yeah. these bikes on Old Town, Kyrial, Stork, on people's private property. They have to figure out a way to make these work in a way where the community accepts them. They're dockless, so people say, well, in order for scooters to be effective, they need to be everywhere you go. You can't have them in some shopping center where Kmart used to be because people will have to go there, and that's not convenient. So they're just going to figure out a way. They'll probably be back, but we're not, I don't think we're ever going to see four or five, six on a street corner. The county is regulating them. They're taking a different approach. They're going to charge them for using the public right away, hmm. a fee per uh, per vehicle, per square footage that they are taking up. So if you just, you know, a stone's throw from Goleta, if you go over to El Colegio in front of Isla Vista toward UCSB, there's hundreds. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, are so they allowed on campus at UCSB? UCSB has banned them because the UCSB medical director said we're seeing a lot more injuries. Yeah. People... Um, don't know how to use them. There's been one accident that has been documented in the city of Goleta. 
Um, and the other big thing is people say, oh, these are environmental friendly and we need to get people out of our cars and all these things. Well, there is actually an environmental push against them. People saying, these don't get people out of cars, these get people away from walking and bicycling. So this is not healthy, people are using this instead yeah. of using their bodies to be healthier. And uh, these are big companies. These are, you know, Ubers and talks to buy bird. Yeah. Um, this isn't the small little startup yeah. that we want to help. So that's all part of the part of the debate and the conversation. They've only been around eight months yeah. in existence. They're going to be growing pains. Eventually, they're, they're, they're going to be here. Um, Catherine, this show has spent more than $65 million in market research to discover, wow. yes, that really? we really need to reach out to the millennial <laughs> cohort. Now, speaking on behalf of your tens of millions of, of uh, colleagues, I mean, do you think this is kind of a, a good idea to, to bring them in? I like them. Truthfully, I've never used one because I'm kind of terrified. I'm not a good biker. And I would never go on anything without a helmet because I don't trust myself. So because I never have a helmet with me, I've never actually gone on one of these scooters. But I've seen them in the Bay Area and Santa Monica, and I do think they're pretty cool. I mean, people are, are going fairly long, long distances, you know, a few miles to get to work from the train station or from the bus. Um, and I don't know, it's like this interesting cultural phenomenon of, Maybe if they're around long enough, people will learn how to respect the space a little bit better. Because I think what I noticed when they all dumped them into different cities, people were just, you know, they were, they were strewn across sidewalks and right. um, getting in people's way. And it, it's a hindrance for people in wheelchairs or people who have babies in strollers. Like if they can't use these wheelchair accessible ramps because there's a huge scooter in the way, that's, you know, a problem for the whole society. Of course, it was the same business model as Uber used, which is just crash. In, right, it's in, sort of like you know the notion of yeah, ask, what is it? Ask for better to ask for um, better to apologize forgiveness. forgiveness than to ask for permission. Permission. And yeah, <laughs> that was a little slow there off the take, but you understand what I meant. But yeah, it's just sort of a man's blame. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, so I'm just sort of surprised that just from a company perspective, why they just come in and dump them without sort of checking and working the systems. It doesn't, from reading your story, it doesn't seem like any of that happened. No, I think the theory is, and this is, I read this on Slate, okay, I didn't make this up, but it's basically because tr existing transportation systems, whether it's cabs or um, uh, public transportation or trains or whatever, is so built into the fabric of cities that it's impossible to sort of chip away at that and find some way into the market. You have to do something dramatic and, and parachute in and change people's behavior from the, hmm. from the, the front end. I, I don't know. Well, the thing is that Goleta is the good land, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a community that, really? that cannot handle the, that high number of scooters. Too stressful, huh? Well, it's, it's just not appropriate. It's, there's not the population yeah. for that. And there are far more families who, and children and people in strollers who are using the public right of way, and these scooters are blocking them. So I think because it's so close to UCSB, just like everything, UCSB is such an impact. I live this such an impact. It is spilling over. But these companies need to do their market research and know if we're going to drop them in the Bay Area or San Diego. It's very different than the oh, they have big problems. Single yeah, family Francisco homes in Goleta. Too, they collected them. All right, Catherine, you've been doing uh, interviews with Montecito residents affected by the Thomas Fire and um, the debris flow. What are they, uh, what are you hearing? What are they telling you? What's the state of mind? Yeah, so last year, I mean, we spoke with a lot of people who, whose houses burned down in the fire and then um, also survivors of the mudslide. And this year, we kind of wanted to return back to a few of those people and, and hear how they're doing one year later and, and what their life is like now. Um, not only because we were just curious and thought other people would be too, but a lot of these disasters are continuing on. I mean, there's the Woolsey fire and the campfire. So there's, there's, this isn't going anywhere. And I think it, was, it, w it would be interesting for people to learn from one another about the rebuilding process and how long things take and all that. So um, one guy we talked to down in Ventura, he, his house was destroyed in, in the uh, Thomas fire. He was, so he, he toured the property with us, and um, he hasn't started rebuilding. Only a handful of people, there, there were thousands of, or, sorry, 
Over a thousand homes were destroyed in the Thomas fire. Only a handful have actually started rebuilding. Um, and so his property, everything has been cleared, um, but he's still waiting for his insurance money and most importantly, uh, permits from the city of Ventura to start building. So he's still in an apartment with his family kind of waiting for this, which I found surprising that within a year, there's only a few people who are actually breaking ground and, yeah. and starting construction. And are the interviews online now? They're going to be tomorrow. Yeah. And we're collaborating with The Independent, so they'll also be in print um, in The Independent on Thursday. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, another person we spoke with was Mari Mitchell, and she's a survivor of the mudslide. Um, lived in, in Montecito with her <coughs> husband. And so she kind of recounts what happened to them that morning. Um, you know, 3 a.m. in the morning, she, she heard the, the explosion, and woke up, looked out the window, quickly woke up her um, husband who was asleep. And, and then she said at that exact moment was when the garage from across the street had dislodged and, and rammed into their wall. Mud started coming in and then they were trapped in their house for a few hours before they were saved. And since then, they have moved. They, they moved to Hope Ranch. They luckily have money and have resources and were able to move. But her, uh, her husband told her a few days after, we will never live here again. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, the, um, the, this, the project to put the uh, hairnets on the, on the mountains. The partnership. To, yes, the partnership. Hairnets. To, uh, to prevent uh, this from happening again. What's the, what's the CEC's? position on that is that is that more of a yeah no uh, I don't think that the, the community environmental council is a climate organization and so we're certainly focused on the fact that these climate related events are continuing to happen right in front of our eyes and ways to mitigate against that um, there are some environmentalists pe like I've heard I've read that some environmentalists are objecting to the nets um, but I, I as far as I understand it's more like individuals um, but uh, not certainly not the Community Environmental Council. So you don't see it like a big environmental issue? It's, it's a of, wildlife. Yeah, there's some wildlife, uh, yeah, and I, I'm not, uh, but it's just what I've read in your, in, um, I guess it'd be Keith's reporting in the Independent, that there's some individuals that are objecting, uh, and they might be associated with like a Creeks group to some degree, mm -hmm. but it's not, uh, the major environmental groups here, EDC and Community Environmental Council, um, certainly aren't objecting. I have a question for Catherine. Um, on this investigative, extensive piece, why are you collaborating with the independent? <laughs> <laughs> now, did you put this out to bid all the media? And we we have a relationship and have collaborated in the past on events, so we thought it doing be things the old way. Okay, <laughs> got it. <laughs> the independent is actually interesting, Josh. That's we were looking at it. Well, I, I, well, I, we can I, already put ours on the I'm, web. We can't put ours I'm in the print. Lone, I see. I'm the lone wolf. I forgot you were also an independent how collaborator. Many, how many times have you been on her, on their show over there? Mm. How many? The KCRW? Yeah. Several. Several, Several times. A number. Yeah. Not anymore, apparently. More. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. All right. All right. So so building on, on yeah. Catherine's story, uh, you have a big um, piece on climate change and, and, and new disaster planning, which... Senator Feinstein put on her Twitter feed. Not that I'm bitter about it. <laughs> you got a little jealous. I didn't know that. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. A lot you got of like major pickup on. How much pickup did you get? It was retweeted uh, a few hundred times, oh. like 400 times. Oh. A lot of haters, a lot of trolls. Uh, really? Yeah. Well, anti climate yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. So what's the thrust of the piece? Anyway, uh, yeah. So I looked at the, the a year later of Thomas Fire. Um, Sort of these the new normal, which is these climate extremes. Uh, you know, at the time, obviously, as we all know, well know, it was the biggest fire in California's history, but now it's not. Um, and that this is just all the data shows that what we're experiencing here in our backyard is now aligning with global trends. Uh, there's triple the number of these extreme weather events that cause mass destruction and, and death around the country than there was in 1980. So. This is the new, this is the deal, and um, communities like ours have to prepare. Unfortunately, a lot of things went into preparation ten years ago. The Orfla Foundation funded uh, this emergency operations center and got people to work together and formed these um, sort of coalitions of communication. Because when it comes down to it, it's really all about trust. Um, it sounds simple, but if folks know each other ahead of time, you know, in the 
in the moments where you have to make split decisions and you already have a relationship uh, between fire and police, or between the, those actual individuals, they're just much more apt to make a good decision and much more quickly. I have to say that I haven't seen um, so many acronyms in a story since Kelsey left us <laughs> early, it's earlier. It's acronym issue. heavy. I'm going to save the acronyms, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of... What is VOAD? VOAD. VOAD, sorry. VOAD. <laughs> Uh, I can't. It's, I can't even spell okay. it out for you. But it's, okay. it's a. It's volunteer is the beginning. Uh, no, but <laughs> I, my, 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 my point is that you, you know, going back to this sort of synergistic inter. Exactly. Like even here's I mean, one different for different you. Different stages. So right? here's one for you that this is how uh, you know how nitty gritty it's getting. There's a group called Epic, which is the information officers for each of the entities so that they all coordinate so that statements that go out to the public when we're in this panic mode are um, aligned. Because you can imagine if county is saying something different than city or schools are saying, oh, you know, you can't, you know, so they're, they actually get together on a regular basis. I actually saw on Facebook that they just had like a holiday party, this group of information officers. Um, so, and so that's one thing that Orfla put in motion along with support from the county about a decade ago. And then you had the piece about the, the cell phones and the, the abysmal failure of cell phone companies <laughs> to join in the, uh, yeah. the uh, communitarian oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. effort. Yeah, to... I, I think that that's a difficulty is when things do go wrong. I mean, there's the aware and prepare, so people sign up to mm -hmm. get alerts. Those come to their phones. There's also the WIA, the wireless emergency alert, which is a federal um, alert system that is supposed to kind of be the catch-all. If, if danger is coming, you will get this alert. But as we saw during the mudslide, a lot of people didn't get that. And also during the holiday fire in Goleta, there were reports that people weren't getting the messages they needed. So I, I think an issue is, is when there is an issue, how do you communicate with the cell phone companies to figure out where that disconnect happened? Um, and that's what county officials are trying to figure out. So, so when you did your reporting about the cooperation and collaboration, cell phone companies are not part of that. They're not. They're not really helping. Uh, not that I. Just, that was part of my research. No. No, but you. Yeah. Okay. I think right. Rob Lewin has requested information and hasn't gotten much back. Yeah. Well, Laura, why didn't you choose to publish your piece in newspapers? <laughs> why didn't, or Newshawk. Give him the exclusive. Yeah, we don't have no, a that partnership, so that would. No, that well, I will say, like you, uh, you know, my online piece was quite long. It was a lengthy one, a la Jerry. What do you Roberts. mean, like me? What is that supposed <laughs> to? What is that supposed? I don't know how much you could I write. There's no appreciation for thorough about reporting the school anymore. board. It's I like, thought your piece. What about? <laughs> there's a <laughs> lot. Are you going to start now? I've been putting a lot of words about the school board out there. Well, you know, they, Josh and I agree. <laughs> <laughs> the length of your stories match the length of our meetings in some correlation. Well, you know, there's there's been a tremendous lack of accountability over there, and I think Josh here will agree with me. We, we saw it now uh, Tuesday on, night. Now you're on the case. <laughs> All right, getting back to climate change. For, and by the way, I thought that was a well-edited piece. It too. was well-edited, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there seems to be, like, just in the last couple of weeks, this sudden new urgency on everybody but Trump's part about climate change. I mean, we, you, you had the um, you have the the meeting that's going on in Poland. There's a new UN study. Well, Trump's our, own administration right. put out a study, and now we read that the Arctic is going to like finish melting next week or yes. something. Is yeah. that? I mean, is there a change? Because it's always been the kind of issue that's. Yeah, that's a terrible thing. It's out there and so on. Do you do you do you sense Well, the that? science just continues. I mean, I think you know, we've started tracking this um, within the last few decades and so just more and more of these studies and and scientific reports are coming out. Uh, I mean, it's just the longevity of the issue that we've been now focused on and the consensus behind it. But yeah, it's very alarming. I mean, for the the president to uh, dispute his own report. <laughs> uh, this, that just happened last week as well. And that yet, you know, here we have California on fire. Um, this whole, it's, it's just mm -hmm. remarkable. Based on the fact that he doesn't believe it. Which right. was, yeah, that's, that's pretty scientific. All right, well, let's talk about the year in review a little bit. Um, obviously, the biggest story of the year was the... School board? <laughs> School board, Jerry. <laughs> The disaster in Montecito. I don't know what's wrong with you people. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, uh, what was the biggest story on uh, on the on the on the political beat? Uh, well, <laughs> first of all, Oscar's election. You think? Well, you know, we have the debris flow, and that's 
that's no, that's got many I'm, threads that's, and that's, that's yeah. like one, two, one through 10, you know, so everything after that. Um, you know, we have uh, Oscar Uteras, we have three Mexican Americans on the Santa Barbara City Council, which is uh, a record, you know, first time. And so it shows that to some degree district elections uh, is working. You know, the health of State Street, you know, we have uh, Amazon talking about coming downtown for uh, offices, but also doing a retail component, which would certainly change the whole feel of downtown. That was one of your scoops, wasn't it, Josh? One of, one of my scoops. <laughs> No, no one from radio so asked me question? to speak about that story. <laughs> well, like, they had, it's because they had Laura on, because they heard you at Feinstein's Twitter feed. That's why. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. It's a little light on specifics. <laughs> yes. Well, sometimes you just go with what you know. I haven't heard much about that story lately yet. Yeah, because I haven't reported it. Yeah, okay. No one else anyway, has the what sources else? What to else? do it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, tar Target coming to uh, Galena oh, yeah. is going to be a Starshine's big, favorite story big deal. No, I mean, it's, it's going to be huge for, for the city of Goleta. You know, Santa Barbara lost out big time there. They have this little retail store, or this uh, this uh, smaller sales uh, store where you go and you pick things up, you pre-order. That's been delayed, but now we have the real target, so that's gonna be sort of interesting. The health of State Street, downtown, uh, you know, that's been an ongoing issue. We have uh, obviously- The continued many... heavy hand uh, oppression of City Hall against people who wanna do something on State Street as well. That's what some in the business community would say, for sure. City Hall would say it's the greedy property owners who don't want to lower their rent. Well, I think you asked them for one thing, right? Or what, well, yeah, what you know. on and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and I got minimum 20 minute, okay. 20 minute commitment from Jerry if I'm going to show up here. No, that's, uh, that's, that, that, that's on her show that you get to do that. Oh, <laughs> the, hey, the rise of the pop-ups on State Street is really interesting. You know, we've seen a lot of them. Is this going to work? It, it's, it's an experiment, uh, and you know we have that thing going on with you know Macy's. So, uh, yeah, State Street, Sears, yeah, that's all going well. well. Inside the Macy's building, you should check it out. They have very good food there. Uh, I don't cook that. Don't. <laughs> uh, what about environmentally? What what what, what was it? All right, stories? I'm gonna choose. I mean, again, I'm gonna know. choose this one. It, it wasn't a super exciting story, but three years ago, the biggest No, we were talking the biggest about last story. year. I know, I'm getting okay. there. Okay, so three years ago, we had this oil spill that was pretty disastrous. The plains was oil that three years ago? 2015. May of 2015. Okay. That's good. All You're this like oil a local. dumped in the ocean. Um, it was no good. It was a corroded pipeline. And so this year um, was the trial for, again, you know, Plains All American against the, the county, county of Santa Barbara and the state of California. Um, brought charges against Plains All American Pipeline Company. Um, as well as Barry Capello, but that's a separate suit. They yeah. were found guilty. The company was found guilty on, um, I think, just about a dozen charges, nearly a dozen charges. And they're supposed to be sentencing them by the end of this year. But nobody's going to jail. Nobody's going to jail. They'll probably just be fined, largely. And so. what about the rapacious policies on our public lands? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> See how I did that? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, as, as fires continue, I think the ongoing debate will be, you know, whether or not to log, whether or not to thin forests. Um, there, there's a lot of debates against environmentalists and conservationists, um, but then people who say, you know, these fires are, are getting so big because there's so much fuel and we should be thinning our forests. They shouldn't be this vegetated. So I think that'll be kind of the, the story of next year. All right, and what uh, what about local stories that sort of resonated beyond, nationally? Or, yeah, beyond Thomas Fire, though, that's the question. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's all certainly, beyond. certainly, it's hard to think of it without that. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I, resistance, and I would kind of make a hybrid answer um, because Josh, yeah, he had multiple. I'm going to keep mine to, to two, but they're related. Uh, you can time me. This, this has been the most <laughs> passive aggressive show we've ever done. I don't know. Last week was kind of um, <laughs> So, okay, so the school board race, but I connect it, which is, I think, was the most interesting political race this, this season. Um, but I connected to... Who do you to, think had the best coverage? <laughs> I connected to the resistance, the fact that we do have a really active voter base here. Our turnout was astounding. People are volunteering. People are marching. People, there's a, a rally about ICE. There's a, I mean, so many different issues. I feel like people in this community are really um, 
they, I think they have a tradition of being really active, but it's at a fever pitch right now. And you know, like I mentioned on a recent show, volunteering in spades for Katie Hill, who won just barely um, for Congress down south of us. And I connect that to how many people ran for the school board, eight people running for two spots. And uh, so the, that you know, is hopeful to me. It's a hopeful story. Yeah. Do you think that the San Marcos High School situation had anything to do with all those people? I do running? think it was part of it, and I do think that was a big story as well. It was a big story. Yeah. The San Marcos thing was... Yeah, absolutely. Took up millions of column inches over at newspapers. <laughs> I know. All right. Well, this is our last show of 2018, and as we enter the holiday season, our... Tradition here at Newsmakers, of course, is to uh, hand out our presents and <laughs> <laughs> nice. I have the wow. uh, proper hat uh, for doing that. Uh, first of all, uh, for, uh, That's for a you. good look for you. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. For you, Catherine, I've put some, there's some radio oh, antennas oh, on yes. top of the candy oh, cane. Yeah. So you can this will listen. look good on my dog, too. KCRW. Uh, nice all of the time you don't have to uh, <laughs> worry about uh, anything else josh i used to have something in here for you uh oh that's fine I'll, I'll pass oh uh, oh, JP, uh a i got you the oh, finest geez. beer at cvs uh, we'll hang on to that right now I'm for jealous. you uh <laughs> let's see I, th I think you're promoting an unhealthy lifestyle yeah here. well speaking of unhealthy lifestyles josh you sit in more public <laughs> meetings than anyone so i got you a six pack of five hour energy i know he so stays can, to the end of these meetings. he does oh, this wow. is what i need to deal with anna marie got right here I okay need more energy to keep up with and her. laura uh this Yay. is a norwegian pine oh. that i thought would uh, i'm so hey, excited would look sure, uh, look very nice <laughs> And uh, his gifts see. are not sexist at uh -huh. all. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, wait. No, I'm gonna, to our high powered senior I'm executive uh, producer, uh, Hap Freund, as ever, the uh, elf hat. And uh, Hap, that'll look good on your. Thank you. Whatever that I thing on top of your head, head is there. It's um, oh, much that better than the you. Oh, the, oh, yeah, the that's, ears. That's a good look. That's a really good look. And Nick is not with us, but uh, for the. Uh, 14th year in a row, he lost the best column this column, but he did win the best body award. So we'll have that for <laughs> Nick next time. So thank you all uh, for watching, and thanks to uh, our guests, Josh Molina, Catherine Barnes, and Laura Capps. Please visit our website, newsmakerswithjr.com, to check out my blog posts on politics and media in Santa Barbara and beyond, and our YouTube channel, where you'll find an archive of past shows and interviews should your insomnia be particularly troublesome. Thanks again to our director, J.P. Montalvo, to Tristan, Kyle, and Tara, and as always, to Hap Freud. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again in the new year.